has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I thought I had action going, Carver Hyde. I had Andrus at second base in the fifth, but uh, they couldn't get him home, and that's it. Rockies go to the sixth up 3 nothing. That is not going well for me. I'm very upset there, very upset. I get, I get very angry when my bets don't work out, very angry. Andrews has actually been uh, pretty good for the White Sox uh, since the A's cut him loose and he went and joined over there. He's had some hits for them. Hopefully they can get something going here and get you tied with the Rockies and then push ahead. Let me give you some more baseball from last night. We got to get to tonight's slate as well. Plenty of NFL we're going to get to too here in hour number two on Coast to Coast. The Phillies last night, Scotty, beat the Marlins and Sandy Alcantara. one nothing lead for the Marlins late. Nick Maton with the two-run jack. Who on NBC Sports Philadelphia? And a high fly ball out to deep right field. The Phillies are going to have the lead. Nick Maton just crushed one. A two-run home run. It's his second homer against Alcantara. And the Phillies lead it 2-1. to one. Thank God Maton didn't do anything in those first five innings when I hit that Alcantara first five inning bet on that De La Cruz home run in the bottom of the fifth with one out yesterday. Seven innings uh, for Sandy last night, but unfortunately a loss for him. Phillies get the job done 2-1. Uh, they play again tonight. The Rays and the Jays split the doubleheader in Toronto yesterday. You, of course, were waiting for Fairbanks to shut it down in game number one. He did for Tampa. Robert. And then in the nightcap, Toronto took care of business. Whit Merrifield giving him the lead for good on Sportsnet in Toronto. That's a fair ball down the line. Espinal in to score. Zimmer racing around third. And Merrifield delivers. The Blue Jays have the lead. I think that guy is going to help them so much uh, defensively and with his bat. He is a 300 hitter. The guy can get on base like nobody's business. And if you put that in there with the rest of the guys they got, Bichette as hot as he's been, Vladdy Jr., Chapman, they got so many guys that that can produce Springer. Uh, this is a dangerous team, and I think Merrifield makes them even more lethal. Certainly does. They will go at it again tonight. We'll discuss in a bit. Orioles beat the Nationals 4-3 to last night. Mets lose again at home, Scotty, to the Cubs. What was that number yesterday when we did the game? Was it minus 450 or something like that? Yeah. The Grom was on the hill. Uh, that did not go very well uh, if you were laying that last night. Ian Happ said hello to Jacob DeGrom early in this one on Marquee Network. High drive, deep right field. That one is back. That one on its way. Gone! Ian Happ unloads, and the Cubs jump out one nothing. Whoa! Well, I guess when you see that kind of a number, you should run to the window and go with uh, the dog every time because, you know, I heard all this stuff today. They blame the... Uh, lineup for not producing oh, any yeah. runs for DeGrom. How about DeGrom giving up gopher balls uh, to Ian Happ? I mean, it, it goes both ways. He did not pitch well last night. Well, when DeGrom loses, it's always they don't score enough runs. Uh, when yeah. they win, it's always him. Uh, it's just, you know, that's just kind of how it always has been. I'm not trying to knock the guy. He's been a great pitcher uh, for a long time, and it's, it is a ridiculous They don't blame him record. for anything. When he gives up less than three runs, I mean, he's like 500 when he gives up less than three runs, but uh, it is what it is. The Mets now just a half game lead over Atlanta in the East. They are even both with 54 losses. Braves, of course, won last night. They are underway in, in uh, San Francisco. Mets will play the Cubs again tonight as we come down the stretch there, Scotty. Mets have played one more game than them. The Twins beat the Royals 6-3 last night. Twins were actually no hitting the Royals going into the ninth inning. It was one of those, uh, 
Uh, the Ryan came out of the game in the seventh. Combined no hitters. Thankfully, the Royals were able to get uh, some hits and some runs to end that. Brewers beat the Cardinals eight to four. Jordan Montgomery says it's not easy playing for the Yankees. All those wins in St. Louis the past six weeks isn't enough. Why are we? And I get it. It's not like he came out with this. It's some reporter going to him and asking him about playing for the Yankees. But worry about the Cardinals right now, young man. That's where you are. Worry about the Cardinals. Yeah, I said that in the open. It's like, uh, what is he still talking about the Yankees for? He's been so lethal for the Cardinals since he went to St. Louis. And I told you when he went there, he has no idea what he's getting himself into because it is a fantastic franchise. They win world championships. Uh, They win division titles. They go to the postseason. They sell out every game. Their fans are loyal. The media is soft like marshmallows. And he's going to love it there. It's not like New York, where, again, yesterday we saw Basset Hound, right? You know, you yeah. pitch great, they still attack you. You lose, they attack you even worse. You cannot win in New York with the media. They go after you when you had a great day. Uh, and with a bad day, they'll torture you, make you lose sleep. He doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Why is he still talking about New York? Because... New York, you can't shake it off of you. You can't shower it off you. It's unavoidable. When you live here, you work here, What like we do, uh, nothing else compares to it. All your cities you live in are boring. Boring. Trust me, we live in New York City. You lose. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injury. This is a brutal rash of in injury. Game line, but all take all point. access. You take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live. Prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international. Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. For Bo Bichette to record his 22nd ribby of this month is plus 155 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that sprinkle for Bo Bichette in this game against the Rays. I also like to sprinkle on Asia Wilson. Las Vegas, a four and a half point favorite, but we look at Asia Wilson's rebounding prop of 10 and a half, a number she has gone over in six of seven playoff games, including 11 in game number one of the finals. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, probably, you know, not drafted in some leagues. And again, with no Keenan Allen, he will suit up this week against Kansas City for the Chargers. Robert Tunyon on Green Bay, none of their receivers look good. Hayden Hurst maybe gets an extra look. This is how bad the tight end position is. Um, Only 12 guys scored in the double digits. It is just a, a desperately brutal position. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Alton. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Alton, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. 
the Sports Grid Network. All right, Carver High, we're still talking about baseball from last night. I know uh, Texas and the A's had a wild game. They had a very wild game. A's had a lead early. Rangers came all the way back, did get them with the walk-off 8-7. Say it all the time. Two bad teams playing for nothing the last few weeks. Play (laughs) a wild and crazy game. 8-7, the Rangers win. The Dodgers beat the Diamondbacks last night. That means they now clinch their ninth National League West title in the last 10 years. Look who was involved, Scotty. Joey Gallo with the home run oh, on no. Sportsnet LA. Oh, no. There's some of the power. High drive center field. Gone. Big man land out there in center. Two nothing. I mean, that is so unbelievable to me what this guy has done in Los Angeles. I mean, what he hit uh, in New York in two years, like two home runs. I mean, and he struck out 98% of the times he went to the dish. And then this guy goes to LA and he's he's hit at least eight or 10 home runs. I mean, honestly, like I can't even, ever since they let him start growing a beard, the guy's been teeing off. It makes me sick to my stomach. I got to tell you, there's no one I hated more than than, uh, Hicks and that guy. Honestly, I, if they can't get rid of Hicks fast enough on the Yankees, as far as I'm concerned, they don't even play him anymore. He's so awful. Uh, I'm surprised they let him hit last night. Uh, that was what was that in the tenth inning? They brought him up to pinch hit. Uh, or, yeah, and he got the walk uh, there to start things off. Uh, but the Dodgers. Here's the thing with Gallo. I saw somebody put the numbers up because somebody was saying just like you. Seems like he's hit more home runs there. He has. He's still hitting under 200. He's still striking out the same he was with the Yankees. It's just he's connecting more every once in a while with the homers like he was not doing there. So, but, I mean, we would have took that, right? <laughs> we would have took him just connecting with a couple of homers every once in a I'm while. I'm glad he's he gone. He wasn't even doing that. And yes, uh, I'm glad he's gone too. Uh, Rawlings will now award a gold glove to a utility player. Now that everybody plays all over the field, Scotty, we got to make sure – we get the utility players a gold glove after the season is over. So good for them. It's uh, like nice so player. meaningless, though. I hate to say it. Like, do people actually care about that? Like, fans? I, uh, you know, yeah. I think players do that they get a gold glove. They care. But yeah. I don't think anyone cares anymore about all these silly awards. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, straight up. You got no these, one cares. I don't care. You got care. these guys now. Uh, no, nobody cares. But you got guys who play 50 games at short, 50 games at second, 50, and they, and they do well. Whatever. Give them a gold glove. Who cares? All right, let's get to. I'm glad they're just slate. getting rid of the shift. Uh, well, right, that's that's what really matters. Uh, the Phillies are in South Beach again tonight against the Marlins. We will start there for tonight's action. Kyle Gibson against Edward Cabrera. Phillies right now, Scotty, are the favorites at minus one thirty-five plus a buck fifteen for the fish. Seven and a half the total in this one. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I think it's going over. And I was surprised at the price and at minus about 35. Now, I know that uh, Gibson for the Phillies has been struggling of late, right? And he hasn't yeah. been good on the road. His ERA is around six on the road. So uh, he's had his fair share of problems. And, you know, I was talking to a sharp today about the Phillies. Is that a good price to go after them today against this crappy team? It doesn't matter what they do. They could have Sandy on the mound. They could have the other team all come down with monkeypox. They still don't win. I mean, what, they drop 10 in a row. They just, yeah. last night, you know, I had the first five innings. One night, When De La Cruz hit that home run, I almost keeled over because that was the greatest bet with one out in the fifth of a scoreless game that that guy hit that home run. They still lost. They always find a way to lose. I don't care how bad Kyle Gibson is pitching. I'm still betting on the Phillies. The Orioles in D.C. again tonight against the Nationals. Wells and Patrick Corbin are the starters. 
Orioles minus 145 plus a buck 20 for the Nats, eight and a half the total. I mean, I'm on the over. Patrick Corbin hasn't seen, like, I mean, is there anyone worse than this guy in baseball with his record? I mean, he's got, what, like 18 losses? He is a freight train wreck. I mean, to tell you, this guy gets torched every time he's out there. Give me the Orioles. Again, I hit him last night. I'll hit him again tonight. We might go to see our friend Patrick Corbin when we get to the lion's share, Scotty. Some Oriole bats have some great numbers Uh uh, in their Uh history against Patrick Corbin going into tonight. The Rays and the Jays up at Rogers again. Rasmussen for Tampa. Ross Stripling goes for Toronto. They're minus 120. Rays plus 100. Seven and a half the total. I love that even money raised bet tonight. I like Rasmussen over Stripling at Rogers. I think Rasmussen has been tough to deal with for every team. Uh, you can beat Stripling. I, I like the raise tonight, even money. Jacob DeGrom and the Basset Hound could not beat the Cubs at City Field the last two nights. David Peterson will try tonight against Drew Smiley. Minus 200 for the Mets tonight, plus a buck 65 for the Cubbies, seven and a half the total. There's no way that they're losing again to the Cubs, are they? I mean, honestly, <laughs> I've already been over twice. I'm going back to the Mets again. I am not betting on the Cubs, and it'll be a, a you know dark day that I bet on them the rest of the way. I mean, they are glad bag city with the Reds, the Royals. Uh, the A's, I mean, it's just like the bottom feeders, they just want out. I mean, they're watching football in the clubhouse. They're not even trying to win baseball games. Just trying to get through the last few weeks. The Yankees are at Fenway again tonight. A quick two-game series up there for them. Nasty Nestor Cortez on the mound. Brian Bello for the Sox. Yankees minus 130. Sox plus a buck 10. The hefty total of nine tonight at Fenway. You know, I was talking to the prophet, Carver High, and he told me, you can't go with the lefty at Fenway. Uh, They tee off on lefties at Fenway. So in honor of him, I'm still taking the Yankees. (laughs) Uh, Giants on the board, by the way. one nothing. They lead the Braves here in the bottom of the second. They just pushed across a run uh, for Rodon. So we'll see if they can add on. They got first and third here to keep moving. Royals are in Minnesota again tonight. Zach Greinke against Sonny Gray. What a pitching matchup we have here. Minus 200 for Minnesota, plus a buck 65 for the Royals, seven and a half the total. You know I'm not betting on Mr. Personality. Give me the twins. (laughs) I know. I know you're not betting on them. Milwaukee in St. Louis again tonight. Got the win last night. Got that lead in the Central down to seven, Scotty. Maybe the Brewers can chip into it a little more. They've got Corbin Burns against Adam Wainwright tonight. Brewers the road favorite, minus 125. Cardinals plus 105, flat seven for the total. Yeah, I got a piece on the Brewers going tonight with Burns, and I got it at minus about 24 this morning. I'm taking a real shot here and a high-risk bet. I was surprised they were favored over Wainwright at Bush. And it's, I think, because they're so desperate for wins that I like desperate teams that have to do something. They have to perform. They go out and get it done. I think the cards are already on easy street. I'm taking Brewers. A's are in Arlington again tonight. J.P. Sears and Roebuck going against Dane Dunning. Rangers minus 160, eight and a half the total. Yeah, here's a game that should be uh, canceled. Believe it, believe it or not, Mike, I took the A's tonight because I think your boy, it's, it's uh, Sears and Roebuck, right? I think he's yeah. been fairly tough. I bet on the uh, kid again. Uh, give me the A's. I like Sears. Dodgers don't have a pitcher listed for tonight. Um, they were celebrating a lot. They're minus 130 against Zach Davies uh, and the Diamondbacks, total of nine. I like the Diamondbacks tonight. The Dodgers got I got the Diamondbacks plus money and getting a run and a half at minus about 40. Your heart 
It's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44-13. The potential look-ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33-7 straight up. They 40-yard line six times. Yep. Now, that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. Yeah, I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Now, naturally, there were a few injuries at the running back position that have changed the landscape a little bit about what we're talking about here. Jeff Wilson Jr. will get the start for San Francisco, obviously, because they have no one else. Jamal Williams was the red zone guy for Detroit. He could be on the waiver wire in some leagues. You'll have to tell us who Jalen Warren is on Pittsburgh in case Najee Harris can't go this week. And actually, if Brian Robinson did not get drafted. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tyreek Kill, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Adams. All impressive. Tyreek, the only one that did not go over 100 yards, only finished with 94. Devontae Adams did find the end zone. The setup here between these three wide receivers is to be super important to their football teams, and that was on display in week number one. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. You're right. Two fumbles at the goal line. Absolutely, that's the reason. The main reason probably they lost this game. I thought the coach was embarrassing kicking that field goal. He had the ball with 50 seconds left. It's fourth and five. And you just gave this guy 200 plus million dollars and traded for him. And he can't get you five yards to get you a little bit closer and keep the drive moving. Absolutely ridiculous. The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, Carver High, it's time for The Lion's Share. I know you're ready to make people some bank. We certainly are. Good night last night. We hit a couple of the game props. Good with the strikeouts. We want to get some taters uh, in the mix tonight, Scotty. The lion's share brought to you by BetMGM. So last night with the strikeouts, we had a lot of aces going. I mean, you had DeGrom, you had Cole, you had Gershaw, you had all these guys. Tonight, (laughs) not as much. Uh, We had to scrape the barrel for a couple of guys in the strikeout props tonight, Scotty. We'll start with... The Phillies and Kyle Gibson hasn't been good. The number is three and a half for him against the Fish in South Beach. Minus 165 to the over, plus a buck 15 to the under. He's under three and a half in four of his last six starts. This is the sixth start he's having against the Marlins this year. He's faced them five times already. Two, three, five, six, and six. And the two and three are the last two times he's faced them. I'm going under with Gibson tonight, Scotty. Yeah, I got to go under as well. He just hasn't been pitching great lately. Uh, I think the team can beat the Marlins. I don't think Gibson can beat them. I think Gibson's going to go out there and get in some dirty work. And I don't think it includes a bunch of strikeouts. 
Next, we will go with the Yankees and the Sox in Fenway. We did mention a big total. We do have nasty Nestor Cortez going. Four and a half is the number for him. Minus 155 to the over, plus a buck 10 to the under. He's under in three of his last five starts. Now, he's only made one start since he came off the IL, Scotty. He was under in that. He faced the Sox once this year. He had four. I think we go back to what you just mentioned. Lefties against the Sox at Fenway. Usually doesn't go very well. Under again for me. Back-to-back unders for Cortez tonight. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, The struggles here of uh, the left-hander, he's not the only one that struggles in that ballpark uh, from the left side. So, like, I'll stay under as well. I don't think they're going to strike out a lot tonight. But I still think, like the Phillies, I think the Yankees can win this game with their bats. Uh, they yeah. can't stop Stanton, Judge, Torres was hitting last night. They get everybody going. Uh, they got a shot to win this game because, frankly, you know, I worry about, you know, Devers and a couple guys in the lineup, but the rest of that team to me is ass. So, and I don't think they're good. I don't think they win. And uh, they're beatable. And you can beat them at Fenway. You got to hit the ball out of the ballpark like Judge did last night. And don't forget, we gave the sea salt on Judge last night that he was going to yes. hit a home run at Fenway. We did. So I don't want to hear that we weren't hitting home run bets because we threw that out. Uh, Sonny Gray, of course, for the Twins, goes against the Royals and Granky four and a half for Gray, minus one sixty to the over, plus a buck fifteen to the under. He's over four and a half in seven of his last nine starts. Last time he faced the Royals, Scotty, a couple weeks ago, a ten spot for Sonny. I'm going to go over for him tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's got them eating out of his palms. So I'm with you there. I got the over and the win. Uh, And finally, for the strikeouts, we will go to that game in St. Louis between the Brewers and the Cards. Corbin Burns. Total's been lowered here, Scotty. We're used to seeing seven and a halfs, eight and a halfs for Burns, down to six and a half tonight. Minus 115 to the over, minus 120 to the under. He had 14 last time out. That was against the Giants. He was under in his three starts before that. He's faced the Cardinals three times this year. Six, 10, and 11. Give me the over for Burns, six and a half tonight. Yeah, I'm with you on the over. I think he's going to have like eight strikeouts. I need this guy to have eight uh, to 10 strikeouts. Dominate this game. Win this game at Bush in this risky bet I uh, placed on the Brewers. So go for it. I need Burns over. There you go. The strikeouts for the lion's share. And now it is tater time, Scotty. We got some guys with some excellent career numbers going for us tonight. We've got a double dip in that Brewer-Cardinal game. We will start with the Kutch, Andrew McCutcheon, plus 475 tonight against Wainwright. How about this? He's a 310 career hitter against him. Now, he's got a ton of at-bats, of course, being in Pittsburgh all those years, and Milwaukee has three homers off of Wainwright. We'll take the good price tonight at plus 475. Boom. I'm in on it. Why not? I need them to win, so I hope the whole team hits home runs off Wainwright. I am going to flip the deck on you for the other side, though. Even though we want the Brewers to win, the guy who's going to win the NL MVP this year... He's taking care of Burns in his career. Nine for 27 and a homer, plus 475. That's because he's facing Burns. I'll take that number tonight. You'll probably get it right, but I say no. The bocce (laughs) jinx on Goldie. I can't have it. I got too much money (laughs) going on the Brewers. Fail, Goldie. You will fail and suffer. I know. I know. You don't want any part of any Cardinals tonight no. when you got the Brewers no. on a ticket. Next, no. we'll go to the Oriole National game. We said Patrick Corbin is on the mound. He has brutal numbers against a lot of guys in this Oriole lineup, including Austin Hayes, Scotty. Would you like to know? Six for nine with a homer off of Patrick Corbin, plus 550 for Austin. You can give me Santander. He's got homers off of Corbin. Mount Castle, whoever you want to go with, I'm going to take the fat price with Hayes at plus 550. See, saw it on some Mullins. I'll take uh, your boy Hayes yeah. here. Why not? We will go to City Field next. Now, Eduardo Escobar, Scotty, has been scorching 
since he came off the injured list for the Mets. They might not be winning, but listen to this. Last 10 games, 18 for 36, five homers, nine RBIs. Now do you want to hear what he does against Drew Smiley, who's starting for the Cubbies tonight? How about seven for 12 with four home runs off of Smiley? Plus 360 for Eduardo Escobar tonight. I mean, I don't even know where you find this stuff. It is just beautiful. (laughs) I'm all over it. Like Escobar, Pablo style, let's go. And finally, if the Dodgers did not celebrate too hard in the desert last night, Cody Bellinger, if he's in the lineup, has some good numbers against Zach Davies. He is 7 for 21 with two home runs. Plus 425. I like the Diamondbacks as well, but I like that number with Bellinger tonight against Davies. He is back to his awful ways, doing nothing as usual. I think his days (laughs) in Los Angeles are numbered. I think it's his last year with the Dodgers. And uh, he, I have no idea what's happened to this guy from uh, the penthouse to the outhouse. No, I need the Diamondbacks tonight. Zach Davies, I need, uh, you know, Arizona. Give me those boys from Phoenix. Give me that and give me the run and a half too. And give me the plus on the upset of the Dodgers. And I pray to God that they're still strung out and hung over and don't want to play. They partied all night. Very possible. They were drinking. I love betting against teams that drink all night after they win a yeah. title. The next day, they don't care about the game at all. Give me the D-backs. Screw Bellinger. I'm interested in seeing their lineup tonight uh, after clinching the division last night to see what they throw out there. All right, the game props. Let's go here. Uh, Orioles and the Nationals. Wells and Corbin. How about both teams to score four or more runs at plus 210? Lots of runs down at Nationals Park tonight. Plus 210. Both teams score four or more. You know, I hope you're right. I just don't believe in the Nationals at all. I think the Orioles are going to tee off on Corbin, but I'm not going there on the other side. I think they're toast. Second night in a row, I am going back to the Yankees, Scotty. We were going to go back to the Yankees tonight. We had them with the over last night. We're going to do the same exact thing. We moved the total down from nine to seven and a half. Yankees win over seven and a half plus 180. I mean, uh, it's automatic that they're going over. And I think, you know, I bet on the Yankees again. So I have to say yes. And finally, now I'm going to give you two options here because now that I know where you're looking to go in this game, uh, I'll tell you what it is for what you like. Now, the Cardinals and the Brewers, I've got up there for the Cardinals to win and under seven and a half. That is going at plus 240 tonight. Let me give you, Scotty, uh, if you give me a moment to punch it up, uh, what it would be. For them to win a little bit more, a little bit less. So plus 210 uh, to get the Brewers to win that game and under the seven and a half with Corbin going. I like the Brewers and the under. I know. I bet you since you're on the Brewers, we'll flip that thing over to the Brewers for tonight. Cardinals not bad at plus 240 as well. So there you go, Scotty. The lion's share for a Wednesday night in Major League Baseball. Let's go and get I feel good about the Taters tonight. I feel real good about that set of Taters. Some good history with those guys. Let's go. I hope so. I always like seeing your uh, tweets during the uh, nighttime when the games are on, when we're racking up Ring the Bell winners from the Tater Show. Yeah. I'm going to have to start doing that. I was off the ball on Sunday. I'm going to have to do that for the touchdown ones that we give out on Friday's show. We're going to have to do some Ring the Bells uh, during Sunday afternoon football for all the guys that cross the end zone for us. Oh. Uh, so that way we continue to get excited. Anytime uh, touchdowns? Tomorrow. Anytime Anytime touchdown bell ring. And tomorrow we'll do some props for the Chiefs and the Chargers along with the baseball as well. So we'll do a little combo meal tomorrow uh, with some Thursday night football. You know I got that Chiefs in three. I don't care what that thing's mushroomed up to. I I got them in three. I don't care what everybody else is doing. We're going to talk about where it's gone to when we come back. Uh, That was the Lion's Share presented by BetMGM.
The Lion's Share, presented by Pet MGM. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and seven straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Now, naturally, there were a few injuries at the running back position that have changed the landscape a little bit about what we're talking about here. Jeff Wilson Jr. will get the start for San Francisco, obviously, because they have no one else. Jamal Williams was the red zone guy for Detroit. He could be on the waiver wire in some leagues. You'll have to tell us who Jalen Warren is on Pittsburgh in case Najee Harris can't go this week. And actually, if Brian Robinson did not get drafted. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tyree Kill, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Adams. All impressive. Tyreek, the only one that did not go over 100 yards, only finished with 94. Devontae Adams did find the end zone. The setup here between these three wide receivers is to be super important to their football teams, and that was on display in week number one. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. You're right. Two fumbles at the goal line. Absolutely, that's the reason. The main reason probably they lost this game. I thought the coach was embarrassing kicking that field goal. He had the ball with 50 seconds left. It's fourth and five. And you just gave this guy 200 plus million dollars and traded for him. And yeah. he can't get you five yards to get you a little bit closer and keep the drive moving? Absolutely ridiculous. The Sports Grid Network. All right, Carver, hi. Uh, you got a good one tomorrow night with Patrick Mahomes hosting Herbert in Arrowhead. It's going to be a sea of humanity at that stadium of red and crazy drunk Chief fans, and they look good in Arizona in their opener rolling behind Mahomes. They certainly did. Uh, pain day week number two uh, does start tomorrow night in Kansas City. How about the Chiefs, Scotty, in September since Mahomes has been the starting quarterback? How does 12-2 and two sound to you? Uh, in the, so they get off to fast starts. Mahomes says it is key to how they get going each season. Here's Mahomes. I think first off is the amount of reps. I mean, we get a lot of reps in training camp. Uh, we, go, we go up against a really good defense with a good scheme and Coach Spags. Um, and then um, Coach Reed puts us in a lot of game-like situations where he puts us in situations where we're having to run a two-minute drill or we're having to drive down the field on a long drive drill and all the different situations that whenever you get to the game, you're not surprised by stuff. Um, and I think that's, that's why we've kind of started fast in these last couple of seasons. Um, but we have to carry that momentum. I and mean, we have a tough schedule. And so we're right on to the, the Chargers, who's, who are a great football team. Look, uh... I got to tell you, you know, I never really bought into their defense, but they did everything right in that game in Arizona, and he is lethal, 
And that's just all there is to it. And I will eat it on the, uh, get the hoagie out, Carver High. Bring out the, you know, the hoagie. Got to eat some sandwich on thinking that they would not be better off without Tyreek Hill. There's no way they're going to be better without him. I actually thought that their offense did look better without him. Believe it or not, I thought they spread it out more. They threw to more receivers. They were unstoppable. And I thought, you know, previously it was all about Hill and Kelsey and no one else. Uh, You know, maybe Hardman a little, but very little. And, And Pringle potato chips even less. But now he's throwing it to everybody. I think Reed's right. They opened it up. Uh, look, and he does still have Kelsey there, who's going to be a Hall of Fame player and still dominates. Uh, you saw it last week. Uh, the guy was finding yeah. the end zone, had another third, you know, whatever it was, 100-yard game. Uh, the guy's ridiculous, too. Uh, Chiefs off to a flying start. They will face the Chargers. Here is head coach Brandon Staley, Scotty. Of course, a lot being made about the AFC West, how good all these teams are. Staley says Mahomes and Herbert, two of the best in the business. It's going to be fun. Yeah, they're two of, two of the special players in the league. Um, they're, they're as good as it gets. And I think you're seeing in the NFL, uh, the quarterback position is in a, and is a great spot for the, for the NFL. It's, as, um, it's exciting for the league when you have this many good quarterbacks all at once, and a lot of them are, are really young. And so the future of the league is really bright. Um, makes it really tough to cover them, uh, but the future is really bright. And these two guys being in the same division, um, both being young players, uh, it's great for the game. It's great for the game. Anytime you have rivalries within a division and then two quarterbacks like this, um, it's really good for the game. You know, look, I'll give you that there's, you know, a dozen really good quarterbacks in the NFL. That's about it. I'm not going over a dozen. There, there's not 32 good quarterbacks. No. I, everybody thinks there is. There certainly is not. Okay. I mean, all you have to do is watch uh, last Sunday. There was all kinds of disastrous quarterback play all day long. And you're going to see more of it rolling out now with uh, you've already, you know, got Cooper Rush coming in. And people are like, oh, he did great that one time he played. Like, okay, whatever. Hang your hat on that all you want. Uh, But, like, you know, there are so many guys that don't play well. I mean, it's not even funny. And I think the backups are even worse. I mean, it is hack city uh, in the NFL. I'll give him that he's right about the game he's coaching tomorrow night. Those two are great quarterbacks. They're both really good. And I think Mahomes is better than Herbert, without a doubt. He's already got a Lombardi. Uh, Herbert will be without one of his targets tomorrow night, Scotty. Keenan Allen officially out. He suffered the hamstring injury in game number one. So no Keenan Allen there. Hopefully a little bit more Mike Williams. We did not see much of him, Scotty, uh, in their win over the Raiders on Sunday. Here is where we are at one day before kickoff. The Chiefs now minus four at the present moment, Scotty, with a total of 54. Chiefs minus 200 money line, Chargers plus 170 on the money line. Well, look, uh, I think both of these teams are going to score a lot because they just throw the ball so much and move the ball and and they do it quickly. Right. Uh, They don't mess around. They get out there and it's all about slinging it up and down the field and go, go, go. Not spending a lot of time in huddles and standing around. They move, shake and bake. I kind of like the over, but I am on the Chiefs at three. I'm not interested in that four. Uh, I, I think they can cover it. I really do. I think that is a brutal place to play. And I think that, uh, you know, in my view, he does whatever he wants against them in Kansas City. Uh, when they play in L.A., I think Mahomes can beat them there, too. We will discuss this one more tomorrow, including, as we said earlier, we'll get the prop boat in the water and get some stuff working uh, for tomorrow night in Kansas City. Nathaniel Hackett, Scotty, of course, on Monday night, looked like a rookie NFL head coach in the loss to Seattle. Yesterday, walked it back. Now he regrets kicking that 64-yard field goal and says he should have put the ball in Russell Wilson's hands. Wow, what a concept. He realized the next day he was wrong. Here's Hackett. 
you know, looking back at it, we definitely should have gone for it. Um, just not, not, you know, one of those things you look back at it and you say, of course we should go for it. We missed the field goal. Um, but in that situation, we had a plan. I mean, we had a plan. We knew that the 46 was the mark. Uh, we were third and 15, I think, third and 13. I'm more upset about that play before it to lose yards, to be able to, you know, getting that there would have definitely uh, been better to be able to call that same play and get extra yards. But um, he dumps it out to Javante. Javante makes a move, goes a lot farther than I think we had anticipated. We were expecting to go for it on fourth down. And then you hit the mark, you know, the mark that we had all set before we started. We said uh, 46 yards. 46 yard line was where we wanted to be and uh, we got there so we had to make the decision if we wanted to give it to our you know Brandon and we did and it didn't work it sucks but hey that's part of it look uh, let me just say I thought McMahon has kicked a hell of a, a field goal and yeah. just missed it I mean he was wide right that was it it wasn't a distance thing I said that yesterday but here's the deal they did not play well in that game. Don't be fooled by Wilson's numbers. And, you know, he had big, splashy numbers in his first game with the Broncos with a fat L hanging on uh, his head afterwards. And it definitely wasn't his fault. It was, you know, I got to tell you, I don't think it's that big of a deal that he decided to kick a field goal with a guy that can kick 65 yarders in his sleep. This guy is a big bombing kicker. And in Denver, he can kick him 75 yards. I mean, honest to Christ, one of these days he's going to kick an 80-yarder in, in Denver, in the thin air. But I got to tell you, this game came down to two plays. They fumbled at the one twice, going in to win by 14. That was why they lost the game, not because of the decision at the end of the game. I will never buy that they lost that game because he decided to kick a 64-yarder. Like everybody else is standing around still two days later talking about it. Honest to Christ, they lost the game within five minutes of each other. They fumbled at the one. That is why they lost. Not because of Russell Wilson, not because of Nathaniel Hackett, not because of McManus. They lost because they coughed up the ball. Blame both of those fumbles is why they lost. That's it. End of discussion. Seahawks win over the Broncos was the most watched Monday night football game since 2009. Now, so I know I. that they'll probably – they will try to sell you, Scotty. That's because of their new high-priced broadcast booth. But in reality, the reason it was the highest watched since 2009 is because now more states can put tickets in on the game like New York since the last time there was a Monday night football You're game. You're right, That's Mike. why Listen. more people are watching Monday night football. <laughs> Listen, I'm friends with uh, I'm friends with Joe, you know, a little yeah. bit here on the side. I know him. I'm cool with him. I don't hang out with him, but I'm cool with him and his wife. Everybody knows uh, that he's great at what he does. So is Aikman. That's fine. I don't know anyone, and I'm just being honest. Like, I don't know anyone who watches the game because of the broadcasters, no, or the refs, or anything else. We watch because we want to see two teams go at it for four hours and to see if we can cash a ticket. The NFL has been about betting for 40, 50 years. It's just that now we're allowed to admit it's about betting, but it's always been about betting. It was with Johnny Knuckles 50 years ago, and it's about legalized betting now. There's only one thing that matters in the NFL. They've never wanted to admit it, and it's betting. Roger Goodell, can you imagine that that guy had to admit that he was going to make billions off of betting when he was the most unbelievably bizarre individual about the word betting. Gambling, betting, anything was so taboo in the NFL. If you even mentioned it, your credentials were revoked. You're not a part of the NFL if you were talking about betting. Now, their best friends and lovers are all betting companies. The NFL is swimming in gambling money now, and then they run their little, you have a gambling problem, call this hotline, and they're not going to help you. (laughs) <laughs> Let's stop with all this save your life stuff. Everybody's betting on football, and that's all there is to it. And you can go to as many meetings as you want. You can cry as much as you want. You can have your wife yell at you as much as you want. It's all about betting. All about that. No one watches because of the broadcaster. The only time I've ever seen anyone watch sports because of a broadcaster is two things. Howard Cosell and Vince Scully. Boom. Again, mic drop. I'm done. Can I leave early today because I've had such great takes? I mean, honestly, and I'm not even trying to do it. I'm not Mr. Johnny Cakeville over here. I'm just laying it down today, Carver. You can feel it. 
Just remember, people also only listened to Thrasher games back in the day because you were calling the game, <laughs> not because the team was any Thanks, good. Thanks, so sometimes, sometimes the broadcaster does matter, uh, especially when they're really bad hockey I teams. never sucked, even teams. when I was drunk. I was better when I was drunk. And you've heard, and Mavi knows, you never forget the CEO of Sirius. You were way better when you drank. He said, you, you've got to start drinking again. You were way better when you were drunk and high than when you're all sober. Uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. And that'll be the last thing I take to my grave, that my boss told me to start drinking and drugging again because I was more entertaining. <laughs> Keep a couple tall boys up there Documented. in the broadcast booth when the Thrashers are in Toronto to take on the Maple Leafs. Uh, Why not? I'll give you an update on the baseball. We'll do the rest of the football at the top of the hour. I don't want to start Jerry uh, and then have to cut him off. The Rockies still lead 3 nothing, Scotty, in the top of the eighth. 1-1 one, oh, one now. God. Braves oh. have gotten a run across, so 1-1 one, one there. Oh. And the Mariners, Scotty have a 3 nothing lead in the bottom of the second behind Louis Castillo. So 3 nothing Mariners, uh, on, they Seattle. lead in that one. Uh, we will come back. We will do this day in sports history. And then at the top, I've got more NFL for you, including yesterday we played Stephen Jones' weekly radio spot. Now we got to hear Jerry's weekly radio spot. Man, imagine being the head coach of that football team. And you got the owner and the president doing, president doing weekly radio spots. Every, it's amazing. It really is. Jerry's always more entertaining than the sun. The sun's yes. boring. Well, Jerry might true. say that's something true. slip and screw it up. Yeah. It's way more fun. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decisions. Boss, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live. Man. Prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. A Super Bowl winning head coach in Nathaniel Hackett, at least not through game number one. My very measured, calm reaction that some are labeling an overreaction is they should fire Nathaniel Hackett. How do you get every single big decision wrong? I, 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 how does every single one of those decisions go wrong? It's fourth and one. You need a touchdown. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Where are you at on Seattle? Or do you come away from this game thinking they'll be a little bit better than you had anticipated? Even though I watched that game last night and they did beat the Denver Broncos, which I didn't think they would be able to beat. So typically say, okay, maybe a little bit higher in Seattle, but I'm really not because I saw a team yesterday that just hung on and said, hey, we're going to let this other team just drive down the field repeatedly and get lucky on some fumbles and some bad decision making. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Press Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, Scott Frost was a hero in Nebraska, there's no doubt. He goes to Central Florida, undefeated season in 2017, bowl game a year before. He walks on water, returns home. Result, 5-22 and 22 in one possession games. If they waited till October 2, they could have saved 7 to $9 million, depending on how they did it in terms of relieving him of his responsibilities. Too much to take, probably a booster, who knows. The end of the day, interim coach Joseph takes over the team. They couldn't wait those two or three weeks. And here's the thing, every coach now negotiates a significant buyout. 
That's the cost of doing business. The trade-off is some people think it's unfair at the back end. Maybe the only way to get the coach at the front end. Nebraska may be moving on to better things. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. That Holland goal for Man City was sickening today, Carver High. I know you got today in Carver High history, though. We certainly do. 1968, Jimmy Ellis wins the WBA Heavyweight Championship by beating Floyd Patterson, 15th round in Stockholm. 86, Walter Payton rushes for a buck 77 to reach 15,000 career yards. Also scored his 100th career rushing touchdown. 86, Sweetness. Bo Jackson hits his first major league homer. 87, Yvonne Lendl wins the U.S. Open. 89, what well, we lost ourselves there. 89, MLB owners approve the sale of the Mariners to Jeff Shulman and Michael Browning for 77 million. 90, speaking of the Mariners, Ken Griffey Sr. and Jr., First father and son to hit homers in the same major league game. Back to back, they did it, Scotty. Here we go. Well, hit the center field. Devon White going back. Gone! A two run home run. And he can still hit anybody's fastball. <laughs> An instantaneous two to nothing Seattle lead. And he hits one well to left center field. Dante Bichette. Make- back to back home run. What else can these guys do? That's crazy, wow. right? Ridiculous. Uh, 91, pretty good day for Marshall Falk. How about an NCAA record for the most rushing touchdowns in a game by a freshman? 386 yards and seven touchdowns in his second college what? game. 94, the remainder of the MLB season canceled by Bud Sealing. Seelig after 34 days of the player striking no World Series. 95, sale of the A's to Schott and Hoffman approved by MLB owners for $85 million. That's probably what they're still worth today. 2003, Ravens running back Jamal Lewis sets the NFL single-season game rushing record with 295 and 2, the then single-season record. Vladimir Guerrero hit for the cycle in 2003. 2008, Carlos Zambrano pitched a no-hitter against the Astros. 2009, Juan Martin Del Potro wins the U.S. Open, Scotty. 